From an early age, David was surrounded by the luxury that his wealthy parents provided him with. Miranda and Floyd Price did everything in their power to ensure that their son had everything he needed and wanted. The main financial responsibility fell on David's dad, who made good money trading on the stock exchange. It was Floyd who instilled in his son a love for learning and taught him the basics of doing business. David's mom did not have much in terms of a career and simply enjoyed the luxury that her wealthy husband surrounded her with. The woman liked to pamper herself with expensive gifts, the cost of which often exceeded the salary of an average manager. What's most interesting is that Miranda herself did not work a day in her life. Floyd enjoyed providing for his family and never resented his wife for deciding to be a stay-at-home mom. The money that the successful businessman made was enough to ensure that his family did not want for anything. Days, months, and years passed. David grew up and graduated from high school. Wanting to be like his father, the young man decided to study economics at university. David had a great experience in college. The parties, dances, and clubs that David enjoyed in college did not prevent him from getting a good education, which was not the case for some of the other students. Floyd was proud of his son. After graduating from university, David got a job at one of the branches of his father's company. He wanted to see what it was like to be an ordinary employee at his father's company and see everything from the inside. David wanted to achieve success independently, without favors from his father and outside help. Thanks to his dedication and perseverance, in just six months, David became one of the best employees to ever work at Floyd Price's company. Son, I'm so proud of your successes. Soon you will become a worthy replacement for me, Floyd said proudly. It's still too early for me to be the CEO, but I can for sure head the sales department. David responded with a smile. The father and son talked for a long time about modern business strategies and the prospect of opening new branches. David was very much like his father. He inherited his business acumen and perseverance. But Miranda was not able to instill in her son any of her values. Miranda believed that David should strengthen his position in business with the help of a strategic marriage to the daughter of a wealthy oil man or landowner. Son, you should take a closer look at the Manson girl. Her family is clearly well off, and unlike us, they can afford servants, which in itself says a lot. Miranda kept repeating. But David had a different opinion on the matter. Mom, I don't need Mr. Manson's money. I want to achieve success by myself, and therefore I will marry for love. You could see on Miranda's face that her son's answer upset her deeply. What was even more upsetting was that it turned out that David already had a serious girlfriend. Emily and David met six months ago and knew right away that they belonged together. Even though Emily grew up in a group home, she was very smart and knowledgeable. Emily barely remembered her parents. The staff of the group home told her that her mother died in childbirth and her father was ruined by excess drinking. To Emily's delight, David didn't dwell on her past and loved her with his entire heart. The feelings were mutual and the young couple started thinking about marriage. Unfortunately, Miranda was against such a relationship and disliked Emily right away. Son, why do you need this poor girl? What can she give you? Her father was an alcoholic and everyone in our town knows that. Do you really want to embarrass our family with this marriage? Said Miranda. What's more interesting is that Floyd treated his future daughter-in-law with kindness and respect. Floyd never characterized people into rich and poor. The businessman cared about the individual's personality rather than their social class or bank account. Therefore, Floyd was not at all opposed to his son marrying Emily Brooks. Appreciating his father's support, David bought an engagement ring and was ready to propose to Emily. On his way to Emily's apartment, David felt as if there were wings behind his back, which were carrying him towards love and family happiness. Only when he was outside of Emily's place did David calm down and pull himself together. To his great surprise, the front door was unlocked. Wanting to surprise Emily, David entered the house quietly. 
Almost immediately, he saw a pair of men's shoes in the hallway. What's this? David thought worriedly. David knew that Emily lived alone. After checking each room, David went towards the bedroom and opened the door. What he saw next made him very uneasy. On the bed, Emily was cuddling next to some strange young man whom David didn't know. Still clutching the engagement ring box, David watched the scene unfolding in front of him with intense spiritual anguish. What's going on, Emily? How could you do this to me? Was all that David could say. He then threw the velvet box onto the floor and walked towards the door on his shaking legs. Bye, Emily. It's over between us, David said as he was leaving the room. The young man's face burned with rage and tears appeared in his eyes. David could not remember how he got home. Only one question kept circling in his head. Why did everything turn out this way? At home, the mother was already waiting for him. She understood everything without words. Embracing her son, she whispered, See, I told you that she was not a match for you. In the throes of anger and resentment, David did not pay attention to the mysterious way in which his mother somehow already knew that Emily had betrayed him. For several days, David did not leave his room on the second floor, going out only to shower or drink water. It took a long time and a lot of thinking for David to come to terms with the fact that Emily had betrayed him. At the time, Floyd was on a long business trip and found out about everything that had happened too late. He liked Emily, whom he thought to be an example of an ideal partner and wife. Realizing that something unconscionable happened, Floyd became deeply sad. His melancholy was brought on by the rainy autumn and his son's cheating girlfriend. Only Miranda was happy with the unfolding events. For the first time in months, she felt relief and was at peace. Now your future is wide open, son, Miranda thought while rubbing her hands together. But nobody knew the most important thing. At the time of all this drama of David's and Emily's separation, Emily was already pregnant with his child. Even though it was still too early in the pregnancy, Emily did not want to think about an abortion which she was personally against. A year flew by imperceptibly. During this time, David was able to find the strength to keep going and decide to concentrate on his work. Of course, the young businessman could not forget Emily. Even though he was able to find a way to heal his wounded heart, the situation with Emily definitely left its scar. Having plunged headlong into work, David had no idea that Emily gave birth to a beautiful boy whom she named Kevin after her favorite actor. All this time, the young woman lived alone and not a day passed without her thinking of David. Few people knew that what happened in the bedroom that day was pure improvisation. Emily's alleged lover was her friend from a group home whose name was Brandon White. In fact, the young people were not intimate with each other. They lay in bed under a blanket, fully dressed. It was all deliberately staged to keep Emily and David apart. Miranda Price came up with this cruel plan. She had visited Emily the day before. Honey, you have no future with David, didn't he tell you? He's already engaged to the daughter of Manson the millionaire. Have you heard of him? I can see in your eyes that you have. So think about it, it is unlikely that you will be able to compete with his daughter. Miranda lied without batting an eye. Being a skilled manipulator, she quickly outlined Emily's unfavorable future prospects. It was Miranda who persuaded Emily to stage the passionate scene in the bedroom. Yielding to the persuasions of her almost mother-in-law, Emily destroyed her happiness with her own two hands. And now, as Emily was raising her own son alone, not a day passed without regretting her actions. Walking along the shady alleys of the city park, Emily pushed little Kevin's stroller and remembered the past. Once, during one of these walks, she ran into Floyd Price, who immediately recognized her. Emily blushed when she saw the father of the love of her life and lowered her eyes in embarrassment. 
She was well aware that in the eyes of Mr. Price, she was an ordinary cheater. To Emily's great surprise, the man was incredibly happy to see her. Floyd sat down with Emily on a bench and began to ask her questions about that fateful event from a year ago. At first, Emily didn't want to tell him the truth and was inventing all sorts of fables. And then, after feeling Floyd's genuine concern and warmth, decided to tell him what actually happened that day. The businessman listened to Emily's story intently and only occasionally asked her probing questions. I had a feeling that my wife had something to do with it. Miranda loves to play such games, forgetting that they have devastating consequences for real people. Floyd concluded. Do you really believe me? Emily asked with tears in her eyes. Of course I do, and Kevin looks just like David. There's no question about it. A child needs a father, and I need a grandson with whom I can fish for trout in Wyoming in my old age. Floyd said with a smile. A sweet smile spread across Emily's face. At that moment, she wanted to hug Floyd and kiss him on the cheek. Floyd gently took the stroller from Emily and began to walk in the direction of his house. David, who had recently returned from a long business trip, was supposed to visit his parents later that day. Floyd had a plan to reconcile the two young people who were forced to break up by his wife. Despite Emily's inner turmoil, her unexpected meeting with David went well. Miranda realized that her plan had failed when she saw Emily with the child in her arms. Mustering up the courage, she immediately asked Emily for forgiveness and personally told David about everything. Of course, we can talk about that long-awaited meeting for a while, but it will suffice to say that deep love persevered in the hearts of Emily and David. Looking at the young couple, Miranda realized that her life became full of meaning, which she refused to notice and appreciate before. Playing with little Kevin reminded her of a time when she herself was a young mother with a beloved husband by her side. She looked forward to a bright future, 